Craft Beer Adventures with FR5ED and Taps from Scratch present a head-to-head blind taste test between the number one double IPA in the world, Pliny the Elder, and a Pliny clone from Taps from Scratch. Watch, listen, and enjoy as this ad hoc panel of judges carefully and sincerely compare these two brews. It's a delicious challenge, but someone has to do it. Just as an introduction to this, this, this glorious panel of judges that's been assembled today, is about to do a, just an informal review, judging, tasting of Pliny the Elder, the actual Pliny the Elder, which I, I need to go get the bottle. So Pliny the Elder is the world's top double IPA, and when I say top, 100. on Beer Advocate and on Great Beer, it's 100, both scores. The Beer Advocate score, after 2,600 plus reviews, is 100, a full 100. And on uh, Rate Beer, it's 100 in style and 100 overall. It's the top rated double IPA from Russian River in uh, Santa Rosa, California. It's fabulous. And we have a bottle of it divided up here in one of these. It's either A or B, we don't know which. Now the other beer that we're trying today is by Tax From Scratch. The head brewer there would be David Brunson down here in the left hand. He has no idea which is which. So this is definitely a blind taste test. I happen to know which is which, so I'm not going to go until the end. So anyway, you guys are using score sheets and discuss amongst yourselves and okay. just have at it. Well, they have five categories, aroma, appearance, flavor, mouthfeel, overall impression. And then you got your scores out of the, each of the ones. And then on the side here, you got some good descriptions of what to write down if you want to comment on any of these. More comments are better, it only helps must be a better brewer. Right off the bat, A, as far as aroma goes, A seems to have a much stronger aroma. Yeah, the, you can really smell the hops in yeah. the I would have to agree with that. Um, I I want to see. I, uh, I'm with you. Yeah. That aroma just really attracts me. It's, it's a different aroma for me. It's not as strong as the first one. Though. Right. And more, more as it does get more piney, that's on B. On B. Mm -hmm. You're getting what on B? I get a lot of that green apple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very fine. Strong fine taste. What do you guys get on uh, appearance? Um, obviously, A is darker. Yeah, I mean, in comparison, it's A over here. Yeah. yeah. I'm at A. More head than B. Right, A. Yeah, the aroma for A is just good. The neat thing about this head to head thing is you have fun trying to pick the piney. Right. But then you also have fun just trying to pick which, which one do which I beer like? would I'd rather drink. Mm -hmm. That that makes this head-to-head -head competition really really interesting. B to me seems to be easier to drink. It seems to like it's smoother, it's, it's creamier. Smoother. Yeah, it does finish with um but I'd say as far as if I'm gonna choose to have one one beer it would be A, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, B is is more. Um, it, the bitter is stronger at the end. Yeah. Like it, when it finishes, the, it, when you get done tasting it, it's it's still there, and yeah. you know that. Did you, you like the aftertaste of being a little more? I I did. I, I, I like, felt it lingered a little. Yeah, longer a little too. longer, and I was able to like think about it more. Like even when I was like, what was that? And then I could still kind of taste it. I like 
it's, it's still there. So I'm trying to second guess, is it, you know, can the, the factory, you know, make a beer with better aroma that entices me, or can the factory make a better beer that has this long, this longer aftertaste? The problem I have with me is that I want to smell what I'm tasting. Yeah, compared yeah. to the egg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's a good taste on it. Yeah, they both have a good taste. I feel like the most that's the most marked difference is, to me was, was like, the aroma. No, it's like the nose you get as you bring it to you. On it's flavor much stronger with that. On flavor I get B being more hoppy like you're saying. On A I get more of the estery fruity flavors. Mm -hmm. Both are balanced. Mm -hmm. um, both taste really clean. Um, the mouthfeel, uh, yeah, they just taste real clean, real smooth. Um, I would say it's more spicy on B because of all the hops, so that probably plays a little bit with the carbonation. You know, carbonation's a lot higher than B. Yeah, I put that down too. And then the overall impression. I'm just gonna. I like smelling it, so. I, <laughs> yeah, I would go with. I a. mean, I gave. Yeah, I gave A one more point on overall impression just because. Yeah. And the smell is what won me over. Mm -hmm. I use a lot lighter than I respect for a, a double IPA. Mm -hmm. The aroma killed yeah. B. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that I'm tallying up the scores. If I was to have just if I were to choose one beer out of this to have another one of, I would go with that. I would agree with that. Um, where it says down there, classic example, flawless and wonderful wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Below the score. <clears throat> under total. I don't know if you're supposed to pick, pick that out or not, but um, go ahead and mark it on the sheet, just the scoring guys do. Okay, when do we get to do the Coke Pepsi reveal? I know, right? <laughs> Everybody done? All right, go down the line and get the final scores sure. and summaries. Yeah. Um, I'll start. I uh, scored A of 48, and that was also my favorite. There was absolutely nothing wrong with B except for I couldn't get the smell of the hops that I was tasting. However, B, I thought, had um, not only better appearance, but also equal mouthfeel um, than A. So I think since Aroma has 12 points, that's clearly where, where A came out. Yeah, I kind of felt, felt similar in my scoring. I, I, I gave A a 43 and I gave B a 37. Um, the big difference was in aroma. Uh, they're both solid IPAs. B, I would say, is more um, drinkable. So you could drink more of B. Um, but that's not to say that A isn't a good, I couldn't drink a good amount of A. It just A seemed to be more efficient as far as a standalone beer goes. Um, but yeah, they were, I mean, they were both good beers. Uh, I felt like the aroma in A really did it for me. I mean, on A, I actually got one point less than B, but I would say, for me, I would choose to drink more of A. Just, I mean, I, I enjoyed the smell of it. Uh, I felt like, I, I don't, I think the carbonation from B kind of took away from the mouthfeel of it. I, I kind of liked how this felt a little fuller, but it, it was just almost nicer to just have a drink, you know, like a sip. It wasn't just like right at the beginning, it was uh, super harsh, you know, like I felt this was very harsh because of the carbonation and it just, it didn't have the aroma. So if I had to choose, I would choose A. So, she says differently. <laughs> <laughs> I liked uh, both beers, and the, uh, I put A as outstanding because it came in on my score sheet at 46, and then the B beer came in at 41, which just made it excellent, but it was definitely the aroma. I'm a hop head to begin with, and so, you know, I love the fruit and stuff. I felt that next to A, the B beer had a little bit of a damp, uh, musty, just a step down from that. And I didn't know how to describe it other than a dampness, which I just came up with out of my head. <laughs> but uh, but it was a smooth beer, and I really enjoyed the aftertaste of B. And so I'm really intrigued by this side by side vote. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I got a 48 on A and a 43 on B. And 
again, a lot of that really came down to the nose on A. Uh, I like the uh, I like the copper color of B. I like that a lot. But a little maltier, but um, yeah, the, the kind of the, the aroma, a little like I said, uh, damp. So, so yeah, you step down and you know, uh, tone. But I did like the I like that the, on B that hops hit you know, the thinner hit you at the end. Yeah, had a nice you know, clean uh, finish. And, Really bitter at the end where A is, is bitter all the way through, but um, I definitely thought A was a little, a little closer to style and uh, I like that. just a bit better, but they're both, both really good. A is the piney. Uh, hang on. <laughs> first, of, first of all, this this was David, what he did was he took the recipe from uh, Vinny. Uh, Salerzo, I think is how you say his name, who owns Russian River, who created Pliny the Elder and Pliny the Younger. Then he posted the recipe to this a while back, I don't know when. I sent this to David, he took it, used it, and the only thing that varied, you ended up using nugget hops instead of what? Simcoe. Instead of Simcoe, because Simcoe wasn't available. That was the only variation. It's an eight gallon start, five gallon finish. It's the same alpha acid though. Yeah, same, okay. I mean, so it was as close as he could get with the look, with the ingredients available, which means you were almost spot almost, on with yeah. the ingredients. Okay. And then California yeast, I didn't get White Lab, I used to six white yeast. Okay, so, you know, given, the limit, or I shouldn't say limitations, given the parameters that David had to work with, he got really close to this, this malt bill and hop bill and yeast, you know, requirements. So any variation, you know, could, you know, account for any differences in what people are experiencing. All right, now the big reveal. Oh, wait, uh, who, who scored A the highest? I, did. I think we all did, we all did. Oh, everybody scored A the highest. Oh, well, before I flip this up to see which is which, Kate, you've been brewing since when? January. January, January of this year. That's a long five months. <laughs> Four and a half. Almost five. Almost five. So he shouldn't feel bad however this turns out. But wait, yeah. he shouldn't feel bad if it turns out one way. He should feel really good if it turns out the other way because Pliny the Elder is the number one double IPA in the country. Check out Beer Advocate and RateBeer.com. I'm not making it up. So whatever this shows, all right. Okay, sample A. That's the one everybody voted on? That's David's. <laughs> sample B was Pliny the Elder. Wow. wow. Believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. I would never guess that. <laughs> that's, that's. I just want that recipe with those adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was five people of different backgrounds, different experiences with beer, giving their honest, blind taste test opinions on, on uh, established, to say the least, the number one double IPA, and an unknown, untasted, did you taste this before today? I was the first one to taste this. If I had to get a keg of one of these two right now, I'd go with this one. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I really would too. I don't have to send to California for bottles. <laughs> All right, that, that does it for me. Well, I appreciate that, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. And I mean, it, I honestly think it has to do with uh, luck <laughs> <laughs> and just um, luck. <laughs> no, well, oh, wait, wait, you don't think you can do it again? I'll try it. I'll, I'll definitely try what, it. Yeah. I couldn't get lucky enough to brew that shit. I'll um, do it again. That's awesome. hey, the only but. question I have is, again, I, I rated this outstanding. How do you improve the finish on that beer? Because if it could have a little bit of the finish from it's the, the it's the boil. Is that something? Uh, yeah. The aroma, I, I think clearly Pliny the Elder is not dry hop. I mean, it tastes, it, it, in the recipe it says you need to dry hop it, but and when you dry hop a beer, you get nose. Yeah, well, is the, yeah it's the aroma too. Is the aroma going to change over time? Like how, how long ago was this Pliny the Elder beer that we tasted? That, that's from early Fe or into January, early February. I brought that bottle back when I came home in the second week of February. Good question. Yeah, that's a very good question. It is. Now, that being said, I drank a lot of Pliny the Elder when I was in California. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was remembering it. And I don't know that there's a lot of difference. The, the bottle seemed to have been preserved pretty well. Right. You know, I kept it at 36 degrees yeah. and it just stayed there until now. And now it's gone. But I'm not as sad as I thought I'd be because I have another source. 
So if we experimented with this, we could pop it somewhere. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm on board with that. I'm, I'm I mean, the it. IBUs on here, I think, were like 90 something. They were like right around 100. But the thing is, there's such a balance there. There's more sweetness to it. The, 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 the elder was drier. True. It was, to me, absolutely drier. Not good or bad, not good or bad. But when I'm thinking double IPA, I appreciate that edge of sweetness. I tell you, the bat, for my personal taste, the malt forward, a little more sweetness here, which fits my uneducated, but my desire in a double IPA, this fits it better. Yeah, that's what it's all about, though. It's not even about anyone's educated. It's about, like, we all said this is the one we want. Yeah, about. exactly. No matter if you're the uh, grandmaster or the apprentice judge, <laughs> that's basically what it, that's basically what it boils down to. Whether it's coffee, cigars, beer, wine, yeah. whatever, it's okay, what's the best one? It's what we like best. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, man. Okay. That's awesome. It's yeah. the middle tap, guys. It looks like it's, a, uh, it's the middle tap.